Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello viewers, welcome back again and here we go. But an interesting thing today, we are coming to the end of the unit. So we strongly assume that this is probably the last lesson of the unit. So you should be saying congratulations to yourselves because a big component and a bigger one is now over. Now, today we are going to look at two things. We are looking at natural resources, how we use them, how often can we use something one more time, so can, can we have it renewed? Is this something we are going to use and then that's all? The person coming tomorrow does not have to see it because there's no chance. Do we finish it all and leave the others? The other part we are going to look at is to be in position to check out, to talk together and see out the methods we can use to conserve these resources. Mutungo Kamil, natural resources. How can we use them? And then generations to come can also take advantage of them and use them. Are we the bodyguards to this natural resource? How much water do you use? How much do you spare? Do you know anything about the water cycle? Can we use it and use it one more time? And if we use it more frequently than it is being brought back, the question should be, for how much longer are we going to wait to have this same water come back to us again? So we need to also look at one, discuss the way these resources can be conserved, but also at the same time be in position to explain how important they are to us as a nation, to the economy on which we depend to get richer. Bigger economies, bigger countries, better life. But where is the backbone? Where is the building area that if you crush it down, then you do not have a house built? And then the other thing we are going to look at like at the end, definitely, I think we've taken some time without having some bit of homework. So this time, have some, a little bit of it, a few questions to work on, related to the same lesson today, and also, some bit of online, so I want you to be close to your phone, activate the internet, get ready because one of the pieces of work you're going to do is an online activity. Again, about natural resources. You've always had things to do with links, a connection to a world wide web where some work can be posted. So what you'll do is to get that link and type in letter by letter. If there is a comma, changwa kanyerezo akit. So any dot odubusange, ugomba kubijandu kukuri wubwene kuri slide. Type in, you should be able to get a form about one of the activities you're going to do. So, before we start, make sure you have your phone. Some of the slides are going to be a little bit faster. So if you have a phone, you can take a snapshot and keep it, and then you can refer to it after. So, here we start. We have uh, our resources. Are they only the cows? Where do we put them? What does the picture tell you? When you look at these two young children, so let's be gender sensitive. I have no evidence to say this is a boy, and I have no evidence to say this is a girl. One would outrightly say, oh, I must be a boy because there's no girl that is going to milk. Remember, gender is the role you perform or you play in society. 
So there are duties that are not only left for the boys, all for the girls. Everyone can do either duty. So, you have the picture in the background, and in the background you have vegetation, you have inha, muzamazinayazo, and there is so much the picture is telling us. Milking process with so much joy. But the question is, how many more children are going to be happy like this boy, or like this child, or like this girl? Do we have a chance to do that? Can we pass on this form of inheritance to the next generation in terms of resources, in terms of what is needed, in terms of what someone else 100 years from now is going to be able to see, Sine, Hogo, Gaju, all those. So when we talk of natural resources as services, when we talk of natural resources supporting life, when we talk of natural resources, the goods and services that are not manufactured but have value to humans, that's what we are looking at. The question now has to be, do we look at it as an income? Is it only about banks? Is it only about factories? The produce? Musaru. Services. Animals provide services. In some other countries, you have these animals being used as a form of transport. Isn't that a service? But how long, for how long can we have these cats being moved by the animals? When we have donkeys and horses, when we have oxen dealing so much in farming, I think that's a very good investment. Not only tractors are to be thought about in terms of farming. Yeah, some of these animals can actually provide with us a very good, very wonderful service. So, now the question is, do we have a chance to renew it? Two, for how long? So we also have renewable resources, living resources that can replace or restock themselves. Use and use again, because it's there and brings itself back. Now here is an interesting question I want you to think about. How many chairs or tables or beds or any wooden equipment do you have at home? When were they made? When do you replace furniture at school? Now it should come to our mind that if this comes from trees, the question should be, if I'm having timber made from wood and trees, cut it, have the furniture, break it down, cut other trees again, if the rate of formation of and destruction of furniture exceeds or goes beyond how fast these trees are going to grow to give us extra timber, are we replacing? Are we giving a chance for these trees to replace themselves? Think about it. How do we go about it? Are we creating our own problems? Do we have a chance to run away and go to an alternative form of a source of energy, firewood? Oh, by the way, something so interesting. Did you know that very soon, Chigari City, we are not going to be having any charcoal? So no more truck. Beep, beep, beep. Charcoal has come, charcoal has come. This time it's going to be gas, my friend. Another question should therefore be, is it renewable? So we talk about sources, we also need to think about 
can we continue using them over and over again? If we have an alternative, how better is it? Which takes us to another component of resources. We have those that can renew themselves if we give them time to, and others are non-renewable. So here we have two pictures. These are actually taken from here. When components appear to be in fixed forms, counted, measured. So all you have is a countdown. From these much tons of gold, as you can see, to this less or little of what is remaining. Maybe the very people who are doing the mining industry should also be able to display to us some bit of info about how long these minerals could have existed under the ground. So that we're able to think about if we extract all of them, are we giving them enough time to reform? Can they reappear again? So, the amounts of some of these resources are determined, they are, def they are finite, the number is predetermined. So, you consume as you count down. They are not renewed, no replacement, and once they have been used or depleted, end of the story. Stocks, nose dive. Economy, doom. So what do you remain with? What's your fallback? Do you have any backup plan? You cut all the trees. So you even cannot have any more because the rate at which you're cutting the trees is way, 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 way so greater than how you're planting extra. Now it would be so painful if I was to ask a question now and you told me that you've never planted a tree in your life. You're 15, you're 16. 25, 30 years, you want a fabulous house with the best furniture ever, with the most expensive wood, but you've not planted any tree. So let's do the counting. Simple math. Plant a tree at 15, at 30 or 40, when you're going to have your good house, you actually have the best wood from where you can have your construction. So you've actually used what you've planned for. Think about it. Then we have others. Hmm. This one. Hey. Say finisher. Now let's look at this. What do you see in the bottom left and the bottom right? Then you have the top right and top left. Remember, photographic interpretation. Geography, there you come. To replenish is to give chance, to give opportunity for regrowing, to keep alive, if I would use the word. But the question is, if water has a cycle, into the ground, oceans, up in the atmosphere, evaporation, fires, up, evaporation, condensation, clouds, rain again, so we keep in that cycle. Now the question is going to be, where do we get stuck that we can't have back. Which takes us to some of these images. So you have a borehole. I don't know how they call it in Kenya, Rwanda. Think about it. So Kajahoga Pompa, Maza Kaiser, because it is coming from the ground. Two, what about catchment? What does the tank show you? Three, do we have some bit of weather in the picture that tries to show us that mm, 
<laughs> there is a very high possibility that maybe clouds come with wind, a certain form of weather by the picture can tell us what exactly happening. The fourth picture, top right, Umugand. You can easily tell from the picture that from here, this is some bit of erosion. Are we catching the water? Is it escaping? Is it keeping under the ground? That's what you need to think about. That if it goes, then this family member is able to get the water back and use it. But how long is this going to take for us to have the water we have used? What about the ozone layer? Where Jesus went and passed. They say it's very hot. We wonder how he even passed when and went beyond that point. Anyway, that's science. For us, what we are looking at here is if it continues to get hotter, what are we actually doing to this layer that is protecting us from strong, sharp, and desirable sun rays that are very destructive? If we carry out so much pollution and some of these gases climb up, destroy it, what other components are we having to replenish it, to give it life again? Which takes us to the question. There are certain things we want, and we have to go certain ways. Whichever course we take, the question is going to be the needs or wants plus what nature gives us and if we are to always get what we need from nature, as nature comfortably, wholesomely, with its humble heart, gives us what we need, for how long can we sustain that? Your hands are always getting from the planet. Give me. When shall you stop asking from it? And if you're asking from it, are you giving it a chance to have a breather? Oh, you're always waiting for it. It sneezes, you steal. So we have to look at sustainability. For whatever we get from the planet, whatever we're extracting, is it sustainable? Can it go on and on and on? While we keep our nature providing us with what it has, can we balance out what we're getting from it? So are we living within our limits? Are you leading a lifestyle that you are not going to sustain for a very long time? So it starts from home. If you're exorbitant in lifestyle, promise me you, you're not going to spare the planet. Because naturally, you're exorbitant. You don't mind about resources. Money comes, you spill it over, you're finished. There is water at home, you do not even think about when it's raining. Ah, it's natural, it's going to rain again. What if it doesn't? So living within the means of nature, on the interest, or the sustainable natural income generated by natural capital is what you're looking at. Umutungo Kamere is the natural capital. So we look now at what we use here and the benefits. Now the question is going to be, when we are looking at all this, what risks are we finding ourselves into? That's one. Two, are we so much of environmentalists that we tend to forget what we actually need as a nation? What does society need? Are there components of the environment that society will benefit from? Do we need the money? Yes. But we also need the environment. And our society needs to grow and keep in balance. So at the end of the day, we find ourselves in the center of it all. So we have to be in position to balance out, check the equation, the triplets, and there you go in the middle. 
Yama Shiganyin. One is missing, no food. You destroy this, you can't survive. You forget this, society will have problems. You think about this alone, where shall be the economic development? So it's, it's a, a balanced and a tricky, at the same time, component we need to seriously think about. You as a person, the implementers of most of these programs, the planners of the nation, you are all in there. And, like we just mentioned, if we are at the crossroads, we are torn apart. So we don't know whether we head north or head south or west or east. What should be our central focal point that we do not lose either of all the components that we do have in here? So, we need economies. So we have to make marketable goods and services, but at the same time, think about the environment. If I need the best guitar, what type of wood do I have to get? And how long does a tree grow to produce the best guitar as wood? When it comes to ecological, tourism comes in. Can we support some of these programs such that, one, societies can benefit, we can have these services from ecotourism and all others, and we still maintain our environment, so the future generation can also have that foreign exchange. So we need to think about they pay those dollars. Wow, very nice. Does our government remember us, those living in Chiniji, and uh, give us some little bit of portion of it? You say, yeah, hospital, wonderful. Roads, yes. Free water, as a result of that foreign exchange. What about the technological applications we bring in? So that, remember, we can increase our production with better technologies and be in position to still keep in the central focal point. What about the cultural norms? What about the cows, the nyambos? Isn't it a resource? Yes. Are there countries that have had even factories able to manufacture tractors, but they still have those cultural attachments to their environment and populations and resources. So they still use the oxen to do the farming, and it looks wonderful. In the same way, we want to have increased production. There are things we need to think about. When we go urbanization, it means that more are in the cities, they might consume a lot of resources, but we give chance for the countryside to be able to have enough land for production. Think about it. Few people in the villages, so there is enough land to till. When we talk of globalization, we need not to continue thinking about only Rwanda as a nation and we forget that actually the globe has now become so small, like a village. We all work as one unit. And for it to be functional, all the companies must work so well. You won't have a functioning phone without a battery. When we look at ecocentric components, when we are looking at reducing the use of non-renewable resources and minimize their use of renewable ones, we are looking at how much can we hold back and run away from. And then we also have the human carrying capacity. Remember, our load as a population is going to be predetermined by what we actually have. So, when we increase technology, and so we so much attach ourselves to technology, construction, apartments, blah, 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 no single houses, stairs, and all that, we increase how much the land can give us. We also have conventional economists. We have ecological economies. All these help us in putting everything together. The use and the reuse of materials. How many times do you use a water bottle? Use throw, 
Then you're going to make an industry, produce another one. What about bottles? Think about it. You can use these bottles more often. You can use them as a source of other components. Remanufacturing. Have a product, get it finished. You can reprocess it and have it. I think you should think about something like a project of that sort. Absolute reductions where you're looking at having to use very few things and maximize the little you have. Students, when you're at school, or even as the teachers, I'm a teacher myself, but I don't remember the time I've seen myself recycling paper. Oh, pff, I feel so bad about this. But the question is, does the government give us a chance to have materials to recycle paper? I understand in rep, you people recycle the exams others have sat, and they bring the same papers again. Now the question is, have you given schools the capacity to do that? And if you haven't, think about it. That's your homework. We talk of ecological footprint. We are looking at an area of land that would be required to sustainably, oh, sustainably provide all the needs of a population within a small amount of space. The larger the ecological footprint, the more resources we consume. So think about it. So, let's continue focusing and strategizing among the things like we have just said. Start recycling. You students, look at the papers you're having. Schools, find a way to, can you remake things from the already made ones? And can you reduce, shrink? What about the area of land that would be required to sustainably provide all of the particular requirements? And finally, I want you to do this. Like I just said before, homework. Quickly. So you have your camera, you take a snapshot of the screen, minus me. And then, carefully look at this link. You will type it the way it appears. It should give you a Google form, which you're going to put in your email and the name, then it should once you're done clicking the multiple choice numbers, it should give you the answers. So that's self-assessments. Wow, it's wonderful. You're using IT. Remember, type it the way it appears. Click enter, you have the form, and then you are able to start answering your multiple choices, and poop, off you go. You see your answers. And that's it for the last lesson of the unit one. Populations, you and resources, what you consume. Thank you so much.